Right now on Denver 7 News at 7 o'clock on Local 3, a community in mourning. People in Uvalde, Texas are gathering to remember the 19 children and two teachers killed in the classroom. If I would have known, I would have reported it. This morning, investigators are revealing more about the shooter as his grandfather admits he did not know there were guns in the house. The tragedy in Texas is once again shining a light on school safety here in Colorado. We're taking a look at the special agency tasked with keeping our kids and teachers out of harm's way. Plus, we really try to emphasize that like no matter the day you're having, there's always a good thing. Prioritizing mental health. We're taking you inside a local classroom where time for reflection is part of the curriculum and teachers say it has made all the difference in their community's well-being. Thanks for joining us. I'm Brian Sanders. And I'm Nicole Brady. Hopefully you can do yourself some good by getting outside today. Uh, sunny day ahead, Lisa, and quite a warm up. Yeah, that sunshine always helps, mm -hmm. especially coming off of what's been such a cloudy, cold, gray week or so. You know, we hit 80s last Thursday. Since then, it's been well, pretty much well below normal. Yesterday, low 70s. Today, lots of sunshine, clear skies, and across the state, we're going to see some pretty dry and, and pretty weather today. 50 degrees already in Denver. Winds are southwest at about 5 to 10 miles per hour, and we're going to see a big warm-up here. In fact, mid to, mid to upper 60s as early as 10 o'clock, and then we'll hit highs closer to 80 this afternoon. Afternoon. Upper 70s to low 80s from Denver north to Fort Collins. Highlands Ranch today 82. More 70s for the foothills too. Evergreen this afternoon, a high of 74. So it's going to be a pretty warm day today, even warmer tomorrow. Now things are going to dry out, and this is our most recent drought monitor uh, released early this morning. And we'll talk more about that and what we're expecting as far as rain goes this weekend coming up. We have a couple of serious problems out on the drive here this morning. I'll start up to the north side of town where we have a big crash on I-25 that's being cleaned up between Decono and Erie. From the cameras up there, you can actually still see a lot of the heavy traffic as they're moving this camera back towards where that crash was on the southbound side. These are the backups in there coming down from Decono, and I think the crash is mostly cleared. We won't have time to wait for the camera. We'll, I'll let you know about that. The drive time is still at about an hour, so the side roads 287 still going to be a better option for you trying to get down from the north end side of town. We do have a big crash still on Hamden, mostly on the eastbound side right there at I-25. Also a big one, a rollover crash right here on southbound Parker Road. Take a look from the camera there on air tracker at Quinn at uh, uh, Parker and Orchard. This is the where it's closed down. There's the rollover crash right there. So just one lane is open and that's why traffic is stacked up. So chambers getting down this way can help you save a whole bunch of time. As we take a live look at Rob Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas this morning where you can see 21 crosses there lined outside the front of the school in memory of 19 children and two teachers killed. President Biden says he will travel to Uvalde here in the coming days to meet with families. And we're learning some of their stories. These 19 children, most of them 10 years old, and the two teachers who lost their lives. Irma Garcia's family says she sacrificed herself to protect her kids in the classroom, shielding them from gunfire as much as she could. Mm -hmm. uh, the students there, we were learning that they had passions for sports, art, and music. So as their families mourn, investigators are working to find out more about the shooter who took their lives too soon. The small town of Uvalde, Texas, coming together overnight to pray for the victims and their families after Tuesday's deadly shooting at Robb Elementary School. Authorities say 18-year-old Salvador Ramos, armed with an AR-15 style weapon, stormed into a classroom, barricaded himself inside and opened fire. 19 children lost their lives inside that classroom, along with two teachers. For responding officers, this was personal. Many had their own children in harm's way. All in that unit, stand by. You know how to get close, we got shot fired. Officials say officers shot and killed the suspect roughly 40 minutes to an hour after his first encounter with a school resource officer at the building entrance. Authorities say the suspect turned 18 just nine days ago. The ATF says just one day after his birthday, he bought an AR-15 style rifle. Three days later, he bought a second one. And four days later, he was at Robb Elementary School. Ramos's grandfather tells ABC's Matt Gutman he didn't know his grandson had weapons. If I would have known, I would have reported it. Messages obtained by ABC News also reveal a chilling warning just minutes before the shooting. The suspected gunman texted a 15-year-old girl in Germany, first describing an argument with his grandmother over paying his phone bill. Later, he writes, I'm going to go shoot up an elementary school right now. 
Investigators are now poring over his social media. The school superintendent has ended the school year early. My heart was broken today. We're a small community, and we will need your prayers to get us through this. A town of about 16,000 people in South Texas. A Customs and Border Protection official told ABC News there were four Border Patrol agents, members of elite specialized units who engaged and stopped the shooter, along with state and local officers. Boulder police say they arrested a 14 year old student in connection to threats made against Casey Middle School. Officials say the teenager threatened a school shooting at celebrations planned for the last day of school, which is today. Officials had announced extra security at the school earlier this week. Well, we all want our kids to be safe and feel safe in mm -hmm. the classroom. And Jessica Crawford looked into a Colorado agency that is dedicated to school safety. That's right, and the big focus of the Colorado School Resource Safety Center is assessing threats before they become a bigger problem. Just last month, the Colorado School Safety Resource Center released crisis response guidelines for schools. These guidelines are for all different types of incidents, not just for school shootings. It calls for schools to identify school safety and crisis team members. Those teams include administrators, mental health professionals, nurses, and anyone else with emergency expertise. It also gives guidance for schools on conducting multiple drills per year and creating lockdown, communication, and reunification plans. One of the most important parts, though, of these guidelines is identifying a threat before it's too late. They have law enforcement officers, if there are such in the school or in the community. They have mental health providers as well as school administrators that take a look at any student that um, they feel may be at risk of doing something violent in the school and figuring out what kinds of resources can they put in place to prevent that child from um, moving forward on a pathway to violence. And Director Christine Harms there said that she would love to see every classroom in Colorado have a door that can lock with a push button from the inside. She told me that in some schools, doors can only be locked from the outside and with some keys. She said that the improvement can be really expensive for schools, and she hopes to see more school security disbursement funds from the state moving forward in the future. Seems like a, a new security measure every year almost. All right. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you. Oh, well, it's after these types of tragedies that we look at what needs to be done to prevent a next time. There's been a lot of focus on mental health lately. Denver Public Schools will soon require each of its schools to set aside 20 minutes a day dedicated to help with students' mental health. Denver 7's Veronica Acosta visited an elementary school that, puts, uh, that has a program in place for the last five years to address mental health. And teachers say, Veronica, it's made all the difference. They do, and New Lawn Elementary School, they go above and beyond. They actually set aside 45 minutes a day for students' social and emotional learning, 30 minutes in the morning and then 15 minutes in the afternoon. Soon, DPS's more than 90,000 students will also get that time. Six-year-olds in a circle is an abnormal in an elementary school. No diga, no diga, quien tiene la pelota. But at New Lawn Elementary, these six-year-olds are doing more than just playing with a ball in that circle. Instead, they're taking nearly an hour out of their day to learn things like the fair ways to play, share, even take turns. Classroom 119 isn't the only one doing this. Upstairs in Mrs. Edder's fourth grade classroom, it's the same story with a more grown approach. It's an opportunity to really do some relationship building as well as lessons around social emotional learning. We ask them things as simple as how are you doing today? Are you ready to learn? Um, and then we also go a little bit deeper into some of the challenges they face at the playground. What are the conflicts you have? How can we solve them? And really going through steps so that they have tools to use. This is all a part of Denver Public Schools social emotional learning program. At New Lawn Elementary, this has been in place for five years. After the back and forth between remote and in-person learning, the district vowed to implement this at all of its schools. It's teaching them emotion identification, emotion regulation. Ashley Wessel is the student psychologist at New Lawn Elementary. She says after the past two years, it's time to address students mental health face to face. I do think, uh, you know, coming back from the pandemic, we saw that this really was a much more significant need than it had been in previous years. And so we're really putting priority and emphasis on it now. 
It's exactly what Mrs. Etter does in her classroom. I'm really excited for our day together. Asking students to share what they're feeling and helping them navigate through it. We are going to close with the chime. And DPS officials told me come next year the expectation will be that every single school within Denver Public Schools sets aside at least 20 minutes of the day for student social and emotional learning. In Denver, I'm Veronica Costa, Denver 7. Pretty incredible the impact it's had. Thank you, Veronica. We will have updates from Texas throughout the day, meanwhile, and there are more details about a memorial fund for the victims on the DenverChannel.com. Well, the unofficial start to summer is this weekend, Memorial Day weekend. We're looking ahead to the busiest time to travel on the roads and where gas prices stand. And if you already miss ski season, you can take a piece of one resort home with you.